<laughs> That's a good one. No, not answering that. No way. <laughs> All right, let's start with that. Hello again, friends. Yes, thank you to everyone who did send in a question from my Instagram post last week. I was overwhelmed by the amount of responses. I thought I'd get maybe 20 or 30 questions, but... Yeah, it was insane the amount I got through. So thank you to everyone who bothered to send me a question. If I don't get to your question today, I am gonna do more Q and A's in the future. Now, before I answer the first question, do make sure you stick around to the end of the video because it's nearly Christmas time and the spirit of giving. Um, there's a company who reached out to me. I'll be totally honest, they asked me uh, if I wanted to wear one of their watches. The company's called Aviator. They're based in the UK. Their watches are really, really nice. They've got an aviation theme. And, but I did think, look, I, I do have a watch and I'm not really looking for a new one at the moment. But I did ask them, well, are they happy if I give one away on the channel? And to their credit, they said yes. But stick around. At the end of the video, I'll let you know how you can win this watch. It comes in this very nice box. Okay, let's start going through these. Uh, YMLT Spotter. Any plans to do a flight in the Cirrus to any place in Tasmania anytime soon? Yes, Tasmania is somewhere that I've been planning to go to for a while. Low freezing levels and cloud over the Bass Strait has meant I haven't been able to fly there, but I really want to get to Flinders Island. Apparently you can rent quad bikes and go mobbing around on the beach. That would be good fun. So yes, definitely Tasmania coming to the channel soon. Infinite Flight Chaps, we all want to know what your job is. <laughs> Might do another video on that one. Jude Laney, why do you fly? So what is your job? Okay, Sean Sweet is what is your job? What do you do? All right, let's answer this one. So I started off in the UK, that's where I grew up. I did my university degree in digital media. My placement year was editing digital audio and video, not for the internet. Now this was a little bit earlier than that, as the gray hairs will tell. This was actually editing audio and video that used to go on CD-ROMs, that used to be stuck on the front of magazines, when people actually bought things in printed form and didn't read things on the internet. I know, right? Ages ago. I then found a bit of an interest in the software development and the computer programming side of things. Basically taught myself how to code, got a job as a coder, worked my way up through the levels, uh, moved to Australia, ended up becoming the head of an e-commerce department here in Australia. And about eight or nine years ago, thought to myself, I'm not really into that whole corporate lifestyle. And I just wanted to go out and do something on my own. So I quit. And that's when I set up my company. Those of you that have watched this channel for a while might remember the name Fly Digital. This channel used to be called Fly Digital Flying Adventures. Good morning folks, welcome to another Fly Digital Flying Adventures. Which seemed really cool at the time, but looking back on it is pretty naff now. However, Fly Digital, that was the name, well, that still is the name of the software development company that I set up nine years ago. So I travel to board meetings, I travel to strategy meetings, and when people say, we need an e-commerce solution, we need a technology solution, we need help with our digital media. Nowadays, I work pretty much more as a consultant, working with those companies, sometimes investing in those companies to help them grow and hopefully to help my company grow too. That's why I love the filming side the digital media, the editing side of things as well. Always happy to share that as well. So if you ever have any questions, not just pilot, there's also digital media and tech over here too. Very happy to share that kind of thing. Long-winded answer, basically started off in digital media, programmer, set up my own company, now working with clients and spending my free time making videos like this. Thank you. All right, back to the other questions. What are your must-have items when you travel? Phone, camera, laptop, drone, Passport? Noise cancelling headphones as well, not just for the music, but um, just to drown out the engine noise as well. On the long flights, I think that can make you a lot more tired. Oh, I realise I haven't been reading the names out, sorry. Um, TJ Springett, what do you love the most about your job and travelling? Change of scenery, I think is really, really important. I'm a bit of a fidget at the best of times, so I don't like being in one place at one time. So waking up and knowing that I'm gonna be somewhere else at the end of that day. Yeah, the variety in locations and the people that I get to meet along the way, that's, that's probably the thing I like the most. All right, Rafe Crayford, how do you get the approval to use your GoPros in the cockpit or wing? Uh, that was all done through Blue Demon Aviation. They worked with CASA to get the right approvals. We've got the paperwork in the aircraft now. We needed those for the suction cup mounts that we use and the GoPro on the wing. Uh, Luke Zach underscore, will you be at the Avalon Air Show next year? Yeah, it's probably my favorite air show on the circuit. Harry's Aviation side stick or control column? Really? 
Alex underscore Chatterton, what is your biggest word of advice for young travelers? I like this one, start small. Don't try and do too much too soon. Don't try and copy what everyone else is doing as well. And don't like look on Instagram and think that your adventures have to be exactly like what you're seeing online that everyone else is doing. Pick somewhere that you really wanna to go to, uh, a culture that you wanna see or a destination you wanna to go to and do it well. So stop trying to do everything and ticking off. I've been to 20 countries before I'm 25. Go to a couple of places and do them really well. Ask for travel money as presents. So birthdays, Christmases, you know, you don't need another whatever item someone's going to give you. Just, you know, just say, you know, you're saving to go traveling next year and ask your family and friends to put money into a travel account for you. Um, that's, that's what I'd probably say. Namim7, with your passion and flying and skill for it, <laughs> skill for it, you haven't seen my last landing. Uh, what made you decide not to pursue it commercially? I made a video on this, it's called I'm Too Tall to Be a Pilot. You can look it up on my channel. Uh, basically the reason why I didn't pursue aviation commercially was because someone told me not to and I listened to them, which was stupid. So don't ever do the same thing that I did. Mr. Wright 4.0, how long did you take to master your landings as a student pilot? I've been flying for 13 years and a week ago I landed so hard that I cracked the nose wheel fairing on Kilo Juliet November. So one would say, I don't think you ever master your landings, you just get slightly less worse at them. So if you're having bad landings, don't beat yourself up about it. We all, all do it. Jeff ZZZ Oz. <laughs> Hi Steph, is your wife jealous of KJN? Oh, this chair's too low for me. <laughs> <laughs> we can move the chair. Is that better? Yes. Um, let's ask that again. Jeff Z Oz. Hi Steph, is your wife jealous of KJN? No. She can have you some more if you want. Really? Oh, thank you. This gives afternoon. Me, gives me a break. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Jack. Bye Jack. L.Brickcliff28, when did you first realize you had such a strong passion for aviation? I reckon it was when I started going to the Biggin Hill Air Show as a kid, probably from the age of about nine, 10 years old. My dad used to take me down there. The red arrows would fly over the top with the RAF Falcon, which would fly over the top as well. Just the sounds, the smells. When you're a kid and you're looking up, you just think, I wanna be up there too. Baxter underscore moles, would you do a Tiger Air flight review? Yeah, for sure. I'd actually love to do some more low cost economy flying and some reviewing of, of airlines like that. So Tiger Air, if you're listening, if you'd like me to do a review, I would love to work with you on that one. James underscore tan underscore crust or no crust? Crust, it makes your hair curly. Giddy underscore Seagal, I'm 15 and from Melbourne as well. I love planes, I play FSX way too much. I don't think that's possible. How do I get into flying? Look, you've gotta go find your local flying school. Go down, tell them what you want, tell them your objectives. Get them to put a plan together for you. See if there's any help that you can give them in return for flying hours as well. And look, all I'd say is just immerse yourself in aviation. You're doing the right thing on the flight sims as well. Listen to live ATC, talk to other pilots, buy the theory books from your local flying shop as well and start looking at what some of the exams are gonna be like as well. A lot of the terminology and things in there you won't understand, it doesn't matter. You're still listening to it, learning it, absorbing it. And then when you actually sit in a cockpit for the first time and start flying, it will be a lot more familiar than you think it will. Brolo, what would be your favorite use of 100,000 Qantas frequent flyer points? Upgrades all the way, man. Upgrades all the way. That's my favorite use of frequent flyer points. It's not actually using them for points bookings. Uh, it's booking a regular fare and putting in the points upgrade. Brola, again, what's your favorite lounge in the world? Probably the Pier Hong Kong International. Katrima, if it was possible and you could fly KJN over any country in the world, where would you take her? Easy answer to that one, Iceland. And I'd love to fly there as well from somewhere like either the east coast of Canada or the UK. I think just doing like a long overwater flight, landing in Iceland and then flying around as well. Just the scenery, it looks amazing out there. I've never been to Iceland, I'd love to go. E even Lee, Evan Lee, Evan Lee. Any plans on going around the world in Kilo Juliet November? Hmm, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? Underscore Stephen dot Taylor underscore. If you were given the choice of any aircraft in the world to own for free, what would it be? Probably something with at least eight seats and jets, I would say. See, I'm more into the travel than the, like I know a lot of people would say Spitfires or aerobatic aircraft and uh, you know, I love all those types of planes as well. But for me, if I could pilot an aircraft that I could fly internationally with family and friends in the back, I think for me, that would be the ultimate. So. Gulfstream maybe? I don't have that kind of money, it's not gonna happen. Will.Crowther, which is your favorite business class? 
Qatar. Violinator, how often do you try to fly in the cockpit of an airliner or do you ever try? Look, I'd be lying if I didn't say I've asked in occasions to um, go into the cockpit afterwards. I'm kind of like that nine-year-old boy flying on an airplane still. My recommendation, so if you're watching this and you want to have a look inside the cockpit of a commercial airliner, do this, talk to the customer service manager on board the plane, say that you're a pilot or you're an aviation tragic or whatever it is and say, is there a chance that after the flight, don't do it before, after the flight when we've landed, is there a chance I can say hello to the captain and take a quick look at the flight deck? It's not always gonna happen, but give it a go because if you don't ask, Dylan Morris 96, was the long reach flight more challenging or your most recent epic flight to WA and back? Most challenging was the long reach flight because that was the first time I've ever done anything long distance. That was probably more, more of a personal challenge to do that one. Sean underscore Sweeters, you should do a massive flying adventure from Melbourne to London, would be awesome. I'd love to do more international overseas flying, I really would. And Melbourne to London was the same route that Michael Smith flew in his Siri flying boat, which I also covered on this channel, something like that. It's a matter of time, guys. It's going to happen. You know it's going to happen. A. Marling, aside from flying, what other hobbies do you have? Well, as I mentioned before, technology is my background. I love uh, tech, so I'm really into filmmaking, as you know, uh, photography, quite like gaming as well. PS4 is just around the back there. Big runner, too, so I really enjoy running. I try and get out and run at least a couple of times a week, do a few half marathons a year. And also, I quite enjoy baking with my daughter. She's um, quite a good cook now. I made some wicked croissants the other day. Logan Undersaw Codling, most enjoyable airport to fly out of. Here in Australia, I'd probably say Sydney International at the moment because I think some of the upgrades that they've done there are excellent. Around the world, Hong Kong International Airport, one of the cleanest, most efficient, well laid out airports I think you'll, you'll find anywhere in the world. Lockie Home 02, how long did it take you to get your PPL? It took me uh, 62 or 63 hours and about two and a half years from start to finish to get my private pilot's license. So if anyone tells you that you should get your PPL in 40 hours, no more, or they think that you should get your pilot's license within six months, don't listen to them. McDonald 8724, have you ever flown in Canada? Any intentions to ever, if you come here? Never flown privately in Canada. Been to Canada a number of times. I've got family in Toronto, but would love to. JA.Grandin, do you want to get your commercial license? I already have a CPL. There's a list of licenses and endorsements and ratings that I have on my website. Joshua underscore Honeycomb, what's the difference between Avgas and Jet A1? You'll find out if you put the wrong one into your aircraft. Don't do don't do that. Check check on the Bowser and before you yeah. Do I need a disclaimer for that one? Hamilton, what would you say are the pros and cons of flying, say Melbourne to Sydney on KJN versus Qantas? Great question. Answer that in the last video on the channel. Noah underscore Austin underscore. Is it a pain living somewhere where if you have to go out of country, it really takes or it takes a really long flight? Yes, you're absolutely right. It is a bit of a pain. If we want to go internationally from here, it takes a long time. I do regret a little bit when I lived in the UK that I didn't travel around Europe more. So whilst I love living here and I probably never change it, this is always where I want to call home. Um, yeah, it can be a little bit annoying. But then again, you're spending more time on a plane. So yeah, is it a bad thing? J. Acob Coil, what do you love? What do you love the most about traveling? The destination is obviously the key for me, but uh, traveling is a really relaxing thing to do, I find. I love the feeling of sitting on an aircraft you know what, I don't really like Wi-Fi on airplanes nowadays for this reason, but I love the feeling of sitting on an aircraft and knowing that you are removed, physically removed from the world below you. It's a very calming place for me to be. The airports and airplanes, they're my happy place. James Leds, do you have personal minima that you apply to your flying, not just aircraft or regulatory? Yes, I do. Um, that actually came into play earlier this week. 30% probability of thunderstorms around Canberra. I was supposed to be flying to Canberra and my personal minimums, one of them is that if there are thunderstorms on the TAF for when I'm due to arrive at an airport, I won't fly. Peter.Tran04, I'm 14 and want to become a military fighter pilot. Do you have any tips? Awesome, first of all, go for it. Um, yeah, so I'd probably say reach out to the RAAF and find out from them what the procedure would be for you to get entry into the Air Force. Just like I said before, absorb yourself in aviation. Read as much as you can now, start watching as much as you can now, talk to other pilots, go down to the airports and, and talk to pilots, talk to the flying schools about their recommendations as well. And whilst you can't do the flying right now, you can still absorb yourself in that world and take on as much information as you can. So like I said before, once you actually sit in the cockpit for the first time, things feel a lot more familiar. But good luck with it, Peter. 
I hope you achieve your dreams there. M Williams 2101, the story of milkshake, please. That's a whole video unto itself. YBBN underscore photography. Where do you see the channel in one year? I would like to see more travel and aviation vlogs. Okay, I can make more travel and aviation vlogs for sure. Well, look, there's a load of flying coming up in 2019. I am looking to get into Europe again and do some more flying in the UK as I have done before, but also further afield. So in the rest of continental Europe as well. I think there's three new countries that I'm visiting in January and I'll be vlogging my way through all of that, sharing the experiences with you as well. I want to bring more of that sort of technology side into the channel as well. I think that's really relevant to, to those of you watching. Let me know what you'd like to see on the channel more i really like to hear that and if i can adapt what i'm doing to meet more of your needs then that makes me happy makes you happy i realize this is a very very long video so thank you for this we're almost there and we'll talk about the watch in a second sam c underscore 23 what has been your best flying moment probably touching down in Morabin after my trip to Longreach, because it was at that point that i realized I can do trips like this. Joey underscore Moy underscore one, two, three. What is your favorite airline, not Qantas? You know me well. Number two, it's gotta be Qatar. Qatar as an international business class airline. Uh, you just can't beat them. Andrew T underscore aviation. Would you consider coming back to Oz Flight Sim Expo? I was in the cockpit in the 747 in your video. I've already spoken to the organizers and planning to be down there for Oz Flight Sim Expo 2019. So see you there. The Oz pilot, which class D do you like more? Bankstown or Moravian? Ooh. <sighs> Morabin's got more runway options. Okay, that will that will do for now. There's still so many questions. Sorry if I didn't get to your question. Thank you to everyone. But this watch, if you want to win, this is the Hawker Hunter variant of the watch by AV8. I'll put a link below to a competition page. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. You'll get an entry into the competition and you can enter anywhere in the world. Also, show some love to AV8 as well. I mean, they were a really cool company to deal with and they seem to make some really nice products as well. Thank you for enduring this long video. Give us a like if you enjoyed that. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already and I'll catch you again in the next video.